Hey guys, today I'll be teaching you how to create this light painting effect in Adobe Photoshop. If you're not familiar with light painting, the idea is basically to use a light source to paint lines or words in a dark environment, and then capture the process in long exposure using either a DSLR camera or even a smartphone. You can find loads of light painting tutorials on YouTube, so you should definitely try it out if you have a chance. It's really fun, but it does require a basic setup and you have very minimal control on your shapes since it's all done in real time. So it can get a bit tricky when working on a lettering piece or anything that requires a bit more precision. Now I'll show you a way to simulate this effect in Photoshop, giving you a lot more control so that you can use it for your custom text or lettering work. Now before we start, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I personally use Squarespace to create and host my websites, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking to get a website or an online portfolio. Make sure you stick around to get 10% off your first Squarespace order. Alright, so we're going to start by creating a new Photoshop document. We'll make it 3000 by 3000 pixels. You can set the resolution to 72 pixels per inch, and use RGB for the color mode. And then set the background color to black. Now that our document is all set up, let's go ahead and start creating our text. You could just use a script font and add the lighting effects, but I want to go a step further and trace the text manually using the pen tool. This will allow us to create these streamlines, which help simulate a continuous flow and add some realism. If you're not familiar with the pen tool, I suggest watching my beginner's guide video which should bring you up to speed. I cover all the basics of the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator, but all the same principles apply to Photoshop as well. I'll leave a link to the guide in the video description. Alright, now I'm just going to type in the text I want to write to use as a guide in the background so I can trace over it later. I'm going to use a free font called Great Day, but you can use any script font you like. I'll leave a download link for this font in the video description. So I'm going to type in the word nice. I'm just using a short word for the sake of this video. Make sure your text color is set to white or something that stands out on a dark background. Next, I'm going to make it bigger, so I'll bring up the free transform tool by hitting Command T or Control T on PC. And then holding down Shift, I'll drag one of these corners out. Then I'm just going to center the text using these smart guides. And I'll bring the opacity down to 5% so that it's just barely visible. Now we can use this as a guide and start tracing. So I'll bring up the pen tool by pressing P and I'll start tracing my path. So I'm going to start tracing this N up here and then loosely follow the shape. Now you don't have to trace the letters exactly the way they are in your guide. It's basically there to help you out with the proportions and the composition, but that's about it. I try to keep my handles perfectly horizontal for the most part by holding down shift when dragging the handles. This helps with the consistency throughout the letters. If you want to break the angle on a handle, just hold down Alt and you should see this little arrow shape appear when you hover over the handle. Then you can just go ahead and break the handle. So we're just going to keep going until we traced all the letters. Remember that you can always go back and edit a specific handle or anchor point by keeping command or control press and then dragging that handle. Now I don't really like the way the C and the E are connecting so I'm just going to create a separate path for the E. So I'll just press command or control and click outside my path and then I'll start a fresh one. Alright, now that the word is traced, we can go ahead and hide the guide in the background so we can see the path properly and adjust everything until we're satisfied. So I'm going to keep command or control pressed and then select the points I want to adjust.
If for some reason you hit escape or backspace and your path disappears, you can just go over to paths and select your work path to make it visible again. So once you're satisfied with the shape of the letters, you can go to your layers palette and create a new layer by clicking on this icon down here. Then go back to your paths and select your work path. Now we'll go ahead and bring up the brush tool by pressing B and go to the brush palette. If you don't see it over here, go to window in the menu bar and select brush. Next go to the brush presets tab and scroll down until you see brush 39 here and select it. Then we can go back to the brush tab. And in the brush tip section, I'm going to set the size to 70 pixels and set the spacing to 1%. Then we can select transfer and under the flow control, select pen pressure and leave it at 0%. Now that our brush is set, make sure you got your new layer selected and then go back to paths and right click on your work path and select stroke path. Make sure you have brush selected and check simulate pen pressure and hit OK. This will apply the brush stroke to your new layer. So if you want to adjust your text after this point, you'll have to create a new layer and get rid of this one. Then make your adjustments using the pen tool and again right click on your path and select stroke path. Now that we're satisfied with the shape, we can move on to the lighting effects. At this point, we don't need to see the work path anymore, so we can just deselect the work path by hitting escape. Then let's go back to our layers and select the new layer containing the rasterized text. I'm just going to rename it to text. Now if you want to use an image as your background, make sure you use something dark so that the lighting effect stands out. I'm just going to use this dark brick background by dragging it from my desktop to my workspace and then placing it underneath my text layer. You can find similar dark brick pictures by doing a quick Google search, but you can use any image as long as it's dark. Alright, so now let's select our text and then go down here to the layer styles and select outer glow. Now I'm going to use an orange color for the lighting, but you can use any color you want. So I'm going to click on this little square icon to bring up the color picker and then set the hex value to FF6C00 and hit OK. Then I'll make sure that the blend mode is set to normal and I'll set the opacity to 60%. I'll leave the noise in the spread to 0 and set the size to 190 pixels and leave the rest as is and hit OK. Then I'll duplicate this layer by pressing Command J or Control J on PC and I'll go ahead and edit the effect by double clicking down here where it says outer glow. This time I'll make the color a bit brighter so I'll set the hex value to f 96 to b I'll bring the opacity all the way up to 100% and bring the size down to 65 pixels. Now keep in mind that if you're working on a larger or smaller canvas these values would be different. So if my canvas was 1000 by 1000 pixels, for example, then I would set the size to a smaller value. All right, now I'm going to add in a glow to simulate the light reflecting on the brick wall in the background. So depending on your background, this step may or may not be necessary for you. So I'll make a copy of my first text layer down here by selecting it and then pressing Command J or Control J on PC. Then I'll select the copy down here and remove the effects by going right here where it says effects and then dragging it to the trash can. Then I'll select the contents of the layer by keeping command press or control on PC and then clicking right here in the layer thumbnail. Now you can see that I have a selection around my text and I want to fill that selection with orange. So I'm going to go up here to edit and select fill. For the contents we can go ahead and select color 
and I'll use the same hex value I used for the first outer glow, which is FF6C00, and hit OK. We can now deselect the text by pressing Command D or Control D on PC. Now you can't see the orange text we just created because of these two layers here. But if we just make them invisible, we'll be able to see the new text. So let's blur it out by going to Filter, then Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And let's make it super blurry, so I'll crank up the radius all the way up to 500 pixels and hit OK. Alright, so we're almost done. The last thing we want to do is create some highlights so that the lighting isn't so consistent throughout the text. This will help add some more realism to the effect. So let's create a new layer and make sure it sits above all the other layers. And set the blending mode to overlay. Next we'll bring up the brush tool by pressing B and then right click on the canvas to select a new brush. So I'll select the regular soft edge brush and I'll set the size to 300 pixels. You can also change the brush diameter by holding Ctrl and Alt and pressing the left mouse button and then going left or right to adjust the size. Now make sure your foreground color is set to white and go over the parts you want to highlight with your brush. I'm mostly going to highlight the hard curves and the edges. Just try not to overdo it so it looks natural. If you're not satisfied with the highlight, feel free to undo it by hitting Command Z or Control Z on PC and try another one. Now I'm just going to stretch these letters out a little bit. I like them to look a bit wider, but that's just personal preference. So I'll select all of my text and effects layers by holding down Shift, and then bring up the Free Transform tool by hitting Command T or Control T on PC, and then stretch out the bounding box. Alright, that's about it guys. Now feel free to customize the effect by experimenting with the highlights and the colors and try to add in your own personal touch. Now I just want to take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With Squarespace you can create your own beautiful looking website in no time, even if you have zero web design or coding experience. They offer a huge selection of professionally designed templates which you can easily customize to make it unique. You can even get your own domain directly from Squarespace. So it's really a one-stop shop for anyone trying to step up their online presence by getting their own website, custom portfolio, or online shop. I personally created two websites using Squarespace and I'm really happy with both of them. Their platform made the whole process incredibly easy and they have great customer service to help you out if you have any questions. So if you want a free trial, make sure to click the link in the video description and you'll even get a 10% discount for your membership. Alright guys, as usual I'd really love to see what you guys do with this effect, so make sure to tag me on Instagram if you post your work over there. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.